Yo guys, what is up? Just wanted to touch base with you. It's been a while. Ever since we dropped the um, the dangers of alpha influencers might cost you your soul video, the feedback has been awesome. We actually broke 4,000 views and had a lot of feedback and engagement on that video. I had a lot of older folk hitting me up saying they were encouraged by the video. And... Um, and young people and it was just awesome seeing like the spectrum of age groups that were touched by that video i was actually surprised that the most gospel-esque video that i posted got the most feedback so that's all glory to god that that was able to happen and i was just genuinely moved by just how people were thinking about this or have thought about this in the past you know there's so many alpha influencers and everybody's a so-called expert and even when they don't claim to be they have massive followings that they kind of put under their wing and try to enlighten and engage them in conversations and life tips and various things they kind of have these mantras about them that are naturally kind of absorbing you know what i mean where you it's almost cultish <laughs> the way a lot of these people have their movements and their followings and as a Christian, it can be very hard to navigate. Prioritizing Jesus above those things, uh, you know, we can say those kind of cliche phrases, but what does that actually look like? What is the healthy balance? You know, what things do belong to God? What things are dangerous for us? And um, there's going to be some gray area where it's up to discernment on each of us in terms of what we allow into our lives and the frequency that we allow. But it's still important to consider these things and look at biblically what we're instructed to do, why we're here, what is the will of God, um, what is healthy perspective on who we choose to kind of exalt in terms of our content digest uh, because it really matters. Um, is the weight of eternity and what God has said he is going to do, um, is that in the forefront of how we choose to live better and how we choose to be built up by these so-called influencers. And for a lot of us in the Christian art making space, we are influencers and everybody's kind of advertised to, to get your following up and build your engagement and post a lot. And we're just in an oversaturated market of content and it can be very easy to get swept into just going all out and putting all this energy towards this concept. And because of that, it can be very easy to be misguided or have unhealthy perspective if we're not deep in God's word, deep in prayer, um, allowing ourselves to be sensitive to the spirit and use quality discernment, not just our opinion. Um, that being said, I wanted to talk about relationships today. Just a very quick video. And I want to tell you guys a story. A couple years back, very brief story, by the way, a couple years back, um, I was reflecting on the quality of my relationships and I said, you know what? I am spreading myself too thin. There are a lot of people in my contact list that I regularly hit up that don't necessarily hit me back as much. You know, there were even some relationships where you know, I was the only one reaching out, even if it was only like once a month or once every six months or once a year, it was kind of a one way street. And without trying to place judgment, because everybody has different seasons of life and the status of a relationship that you might have not might not always be reflective of how they actually feel about you or whatever. It might just be a situation they're in or maybe a character trait. Maybe they don't really know how to socialize or exchange and build a relationship up. I think we take that for granted. We kind of just assume that people should know certain things about what we're trying to get out of the relationship and how to make a healthy relationship and how to make a lasting relationship, how to be intentional. But a lot of people just simply don't know how to do that because growing up, they didn't have a lot of examples of this. And so sometimes people even have to be instructed on, okay, these are the, the kind of foundational things that we should share um, to maintain this relationship. And sometimes rules have to be established, boundaries have to be established, and intentions have to be established to really have healthy relationships. Nonetheless, I looked at my phone. I said, you know what? I have a lot of names in my phone 
of people that I reach out to and I was being very intentional, even if it was the one month guy or the six month or the annual call up, I looked at my phone and said, man, I'm trying to hit up all these people and maintain these relationships and some of them are just super one-sided. And again, without placing any kind of judgment, I just evaluated it from my standpoint and said, man, I think what would be healthy for my situation here is to actually start deleting phone numbers. No malice, int no malicious intent, no, hey, screw you type of mentality here. It's just quite simply, hey, if you're not exchanging with me in, in, the, in the way that I'm exchanging with you, maybe we can just establish more distance and maybe uh, we can make a more realistic exchange of um, relationship with one another, uh, ultimately for the goal of one, having some sort of rest and not stretching yourself thin, but two, to also free up time to build more meaningful relationships with my closer circle, people who I speak with more frequently on the day-to-day, -day, week to week, month to month type of thing. And I've and so just as an experiment, I deleted like half of my contact list just to see who would reach back out at some point. And if they did, I would be very honest and say, hey, you know, um, I deleted your number. I haven't heard from you in a while. No, no malice or anything like that. But I just um, was giving you your distance, and I'm. I figured if you wanted to continue the relationship, you'd hit me up at a certain point. But shockingly, to my surprise, almost none of them actually hit me back. And to this day, they're still not in my phone. And so that actually made me quite happy because um, the. I, I realized I was I was spreading myself too thin and I was pouring energy into people that weren't really looking to have that. Um, and then it also gave me more time to be more intentional with my inner circle relationships. And, um, and, and that's important because um, I'm sure a lot of people just like me out there run into a rut where it's like, man, you can never spend quality time with people and the relationships get very surface-like you may have kids, you may have a job, you may be in school, you may have a certain hobby where after you're done with work, you're devoting a lot of time to a skill or something uh, or to your church or to Bible study. By the time you add up your whole lifestyle, it's just very chaotic and hectic. And unless you're really intentional with this phase of your life, um, you won't have any meaningful relationships. And we need meaningful relationships. We need fellowship. We, we need friends. We, we need family. We need people to interact with who we can love and care on. It ultimately gets you outside of your bubble. It gives, makes you servanthood-minded. Um, it builds you up when you need perspective and insight and encouragement or admonishment. Relationships are just super healthy. Um, but the the benefit and value that a relationship can bring to you ultimately comes down to how intentional you are. And if you don't have time, you can't be intentional. So I just wanted to encourage you guys, like one very healthy thing might be to just look through your contact list and say, hey, who could I delete? You know, or even if you want to keep them in your phone for emergency sake, who might I just not focus energy towards, you know, and are, are all of my re relationships reciprocal to some extent? Not everybody in my phone has to be hitting me up every single day. I understand that there are some relationships that have a certain arm's length to them. Again, people who I contact on a daily, weekly, monthly, six months or a year basis. Um, and as long as that's established and it's reciprocal in the means that it, it's set up for, um, that's beautiful. And, you know, just look at your contacts and, and say, hey, is this a reciprocal frequency here? Um, or do I need to cut some things off? And also look at your inner circle, you know, find maybe the top 20 or 30 people between friends and family who you often talk to and say, hey, uh, be prayerful and say, how might I improve from my end what I'm bringing to the table to that friend, either in talk time being intentional, seeing how they're doing, seeing if they need help with anything, seeing if you can serve. Um, and I think you'll be blown away at the things that just naturally come to your mind. Um, again, when you're first starting off, it may be hard to think of ideas and 
kind of the disciplines to put in place, but as long as you keep coming to the drawing board there, you will begin to get some great concrete ideas. You might even call the person up and say, hey man, you know, I've been meaning to talk with you, I've been meaning to spend some time with you, I wanna be intentional with you and I've set aside time to do that, what would you like to do? Would you like to meet up for coffee? Do you wanna do a barbecue? Do you wanna meet up for lunch? Do you wanna just talk on the phone? Establish what the boundaries are and what that relationship might look like and they might give you more they might be more than willing to give you insight on how you can make that relationship thrive and they'll probably be very pleased to hear from you that you want to be intentional it can be very nerve-wracking to kind of initiate that level of conversation but again it's important in these things when you're developing to know what the goal is if you know what the goal is it can kind of bring your guard down and allow you to put the certain levels of sacrifice that are needed so that the relationships can thrive. So ever since I did that, my relationships have been getting better, more quality, more intentional. They've been kind of getting more roots into the ground, so to speak, where I'm starting to notice certain depth be established with people who I in the past might not have had time for. And then I've also noticed like my contact list is kind of balancing out. New frequencies are being established where it's like, Oh, well, I only need to hit that guy up maybe like every six months because that's the frequency that that is put in place. And so now it's freeing up time or, oh, you know what, this person, I've even had friends say, look, man, I really appreciate you in my life and I would love to hear from you more. And then I go back to the drawing board and say, hey, maybe that guy needs to come more towards the inner circle where I contact them more. You know, it's just been interesting and I've been praying hard that God would use me to be a great friend and family member to people. My family dynamic is something that I've been working on quite a bit as well. You know, I want to spend intentional time with my family members. So I allocate time in my month to spend time, whether it's a barbecue, hang out with the um, nieces and nephews, help my mom out, um, offer to, to do a service or, or help them in some way, just letting them know that uh, being very clear that I want to be a great family member. <laughs> I want to bring value to my family and I want to encourage them and build them up. And I also want to let them know that, you know, it's such a good feeling when you know that somebody is around not to get something from you, but just to be in your presence and to share a bond with you in whatever the activity may be. Um, and so that's special too, and you need to cherish that because as time goes on, uh, it seems that time uh, lessens. And so I've been trying to cherish family time as much as possible, spending more time, intentional time with family. Um, that's, I think, uh, you know, as much as comes to my mind on this topic, you know, definitely look in your contact list. If you have any questions on this, definitely let me know. It's Again, it's something I'm navigating in real time. Just what does it look like to be a good friend? And I think even biblically, you know, the Bible calls us to, um, to discern and test the quality of a relationship and just to have a certain level of character and conduct in how we deal with people. And I think ultimately that'll bleed over into how you deal with complete strangers, where you can bring value to people in noble character in a way where, you know, I've even had some, uh, some strangers say, gosh, I just really love the way that you are this with your character and that just blesses me or that is such a good thing to have. I really appreciate that you're intentional about being clear about what you say. You know, just tons of different skills and stuff that I've poured over into my regular life with strangers or just people who I'm infrequent with. And so I think you guys can be blessed too. Uh, I think ultimately this stuff builds character and then it also just fulfills that fellowship and that relationship that we are made to have. Um, Hope you guys are blessed by this conversation. Again, just trying to get back into the content. Um, thank you guys so much for interacting on the Alpha Influencer video. I wanna definitely piggyback off of that topic because it is such a common topic. And I see a lot of people in the Christian art making space wrestle with this, maybe not out loud, but kind of just in their daily living, you can see that they're kind of navigating through how to lead, how what amounts of content to ingest. And I think as long as we're, in our word and we're prayerful and then we also just have a lot of conversations 
um, a lot of fruit can be had so that we can uh, do much for the glory of God. Um, we have to have these conversations, guys. That's a lot of the reason I finally committed to the, the vlogging is I realized the importance of the conversation. Sometimes the conversation is not about being able to draw a rubric and a game plan, but it's about having understanding and insight and being honest and open and creating a normalcy to the journey of faith and the journey of building character and the journey of the believer. And I hope even non-believers can benefit from this too, but just know that there is a whole new purpose and, um, and, vibrance that comes with those that know Jesus. You know, when when you know Jesus and um, you know the gospel and what he has done, his rescue mission to us, it puts new purpose and fresh insight. It's almost like having a brand new pair of glasses. You'll see the world differently and it'll change the way that you navigate these things to his glory. And by the Holy Spirit, we are guided and assisted in this life process where we're always being drawn to him and he's spending time with us intimately and he's working out the details of our life. And so um, I always want to just reiterate that uh, uh, in addition to this conversation about relationships, just know that when you have a relationship with, with the Lord, um, it sets a, a fire and a, a new purpose to how we navigate through these things so that it's not just logic and reason and and wisdom talk. You know, the Proverbs says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And so I truly believe that we can talk about these concepts all day long, but until you are submitted to the Lord and you uh, have the Holy Spirit, you can't possibly start to navigate what wisdom actually looks like because you're you're autonomous you're self-serving and that's not the way we were created created to be so anyway enough of me ranting it's a pleasure to be back and i look forward to talking with you guys soon love you if you have feedback let me know thank you to the new subscribers and we will be back with a new one soon peace